Well, Kevin, thank you so much. Father Peter Jives, the founder and director of A Faith That Does Justice, joins us in studio. Father, thanks so much for being with us today. Hey, thank you for having me here. First visit to Catholic TV. It is the first time I'm here, yes. A little different than you thought? Uh, I've been in a few studios. They're somewhat the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, A Faith That Does Justice was founded as an ecumenical program to raise consciousness about social issues. What made you decide to establish this program? It comes from an experience that I had in El Salvador um, at the time of their civil war in 1989. I went down there, I'm a physician by training and I had been at the National Institutes of Health and went down to provide basic health care. And really what I saw down there was just tremendous injustice and what we saw were people. This is the country where Rutulio Grande, Oscar Romero, uh, the, the four U.S. women, uh, six Jesuits and their two uh, female companions all murdered on behalf of trying to provide or stand up for justice within that country. And for me, it was a transform transformative experience. What we're trying to do is, in, in effect, replicate that. We're trying to raise consciousness about social issues that affect the most vulnerable among us, and at the same time, offer people, perhaps like us, an opportunity to walk in solidarity with those less fortunate than themselves. And sadly, just listening to Kevin's news and all of these problems all over the world, it, it is prevalent today. It is, yeah. It's a yeah. terrible situation. It is, and I think what we're offering is, you know, here in Boston, an opportunity, you know, there is injustice in Boston, in this country, and, you know, in places that you might not expect. And what we're trying to do is really get people to be aware that um, if we believe, if we're faith-based people, that there are values from which we can live. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And that's and that's our responsibility, too, right. is to see uh, that all people deserve dignity and respect. Exactly. Yeah. So we have to do that. Well, in the next few days, uh, you have an event coming up. That's uh, right. And it's timely. It's a topic. It's workplace solidarity, social justice, women in the workplace. Tell us about that event when it takes place. Exactly. I think... You know, our program has three different parts. One part is really what we try to do is have smaller discussion groups uh, where we talk about faith, but a faith that will move um, beyond dogma and into society living values. Mm -hmm. And then what we're talking about next Tuesday night, uh, June 5th, we call them community meetings. They're open to the city. And what we try to do is take topics of, of uh, social justice, of social interest that are in the media. And we've done ones in the past on um, the migration of undocumented documented people into this city, into this country. Homelessness in Boston, a big problem. Uh, more recently, the Globe uh, Spotlight team did a big expose on racism that we really had them come and present their findings. And Tuesday night, because it is relevant in the news today, is really this kind of the Me Too movement where women are finally beginning to talk about some of the conditions under which some women work uh, that are unjust and unfair. And we want to raise consciousness about that and try to uh, draw attention to it. Do you find that, that with social media now, that that actually has become a tool to help bring all of these issues forward? Well, I think it can. I think that, and what we're trying to do is really pick some of these topics as they come up in the news media and um, bring them to the attention of people at a deeper level, where we bring in a panel of people, speakers who are well qualified to speak so that the educational level then is raised. I mean, many people have an idea of what's going on, but many people don't have a, you know, a real depth to the knowledge, and I think that's what we were trying to bring to it. And it's, it's something that is, I think, a lot of times, it's over here. And so if it hasn't affected them directly, it's, well, it's over here. Exactly. I think that, uh, you know, we live somewhat privileged lives, many of us in this country, and there are issues out there that are affecting people in this city uh, that make life very difficult for them. And I think uh, for people who have education, people who have jobs, people who have stable family lives, it can be uh, an opportunity to kind of, as you say, just keep it away from us. Mm. And what we're trying to do is really uh, break the barriers. Uh, many people don't live in neighborhoods where there is great suffering and where we bring into these meetings both the vulnerable and educated and we mix them together to try and break down the barriers. Now there's education, but as, as a people of faith, we have to have faith in action too, right? So how do we, how do we educate ourselves, which we can do June 5th, and then go from there to bringing it into our communities? Right, a good question. I think, you know, there are many, many uh, nonprofit organizations in Boston or in, around the country doing very good work. Many of them will pick an issue. It might be homelessness, it might be uh, the, the migration issue. Uh, 
we really are trying to hit on a number of topics. Um, and one, as we've gone around town, I've talked to leaders, religious and civil leaders around town, asking if there was an item that you might go after. What we came up over and over again is the idea of English as a second language. We are beginning in English as a second language, ESL program, in the next couple of months with the idea of offering English skills to people, recently arrived people in this country who don't necessarily have them, to help them in the workplace and to help them in their daily living. So how, how difficult is a challenge as a father to make people understand that this is not a problem for other people, this is a problem for all of us as right. a society. Right. I think faith-based people, really, that's where we're all coming from. Whether you be a Jew, a Christian, or a Muslim, we may disagree on how we believe, but truth be known, we all believe in the same Creator God. And from that, I think values emerge. And I think people of faith need to be more and more vocal in this society about living faith-based values and offering basic human rights and human dignity to all God's people. And for you, what has been your greatest, uh, I would say, what has made you the, the happiest when you've seen the results? What has happened that well, I has think given you hope? Given us hope. For me, what gives me hope is, you know, we attract people of different languages into this. Uh, mm -hmm. I lived in Central America, so I do have Spanish skills, and we have worked very hard at bringing in recently arrived uh, Spanish-speaking people who come to our meetings uh, and we have tried to empower them. At our meetings, we have simultaneous translation. If the speakers speak in English, we have translation into Spanish with headphones as it goes on. So I think if we're doing anything that might be different than some of the other groups is we're bringing the vulnerable to the table and offering them a voice, mm -hmm. empowering them. So June 5th, uh, a faith that does justice. Where can people learn more about it? Yes, uh, I just mentioned first that the meeting will take place at the Cathedral Church of St. Paul at 138 Tremont Street. That is at downtown crossings and the uh, Park Street stations. You're within a block or so from there. Uh, to, to find out more about our meetings, you can visit our website at faith-justice.org uh, or call us at our offices at 857-990-3670. Uh, on our website, you can easily um, a register uh, by going to that website. Well, Father, thank you so much for joining us today and bringing that information. Keep up the great work. I've been down to South America, so I, I've Look, seen wonderful. a lot of the suffering down there, yeah. and it needs to be brought forward. Okay, well, thank you for having me. We'll be back yeah. with more of This Is The Day right after this.